Zumba or aerobics, or interested in spending hours walking on a treadmill or sitting on a stationary bike. The I Can Do program will teach you how to use the walking cane as a tool for exercise and self-defense. The program will also introduce you to new ways of dealing with limiting thoughts, thus helping you to stay motivated to continue working out, which will enable you to maintain a great quality of life. While the I Can Do TV show is a great start, it isn't a replacement for quality instruction from a certified instructor. Now, let's get started. I want to quickly cover with you what we're going to do with the cane at points when we're not using the cane for exercises. And you would also use this at times whether you're in the store or even around the home, when you need both hands for doing something, but you want to keep your cane close to you. Your first choice is hooking your cane in your pocket, or hooking it in your waistband or your belt. And the reason for this is because if something does happen, and someone starts coming for you, you can grab for the cane immediately and be ready to deal with them. But at the same time, when you need your hands free, they're free. It's, think of it as the old West style kind of quick draw of the pistol. It's the quick draw for your cane. Now we're going to go with wrist stretches. So Bob, as you can see, has already hooked his cane into his pocket or at home into your pan, uh, waistband. He's going to bring his hands out. He's going to start with taking the hand and bending the wrist, trying to straighten the arm. So you can see his Fingers are completely across his palm, and he's got the pressure and tension here. The main idea is to stretch the muscles here and warm up the ligaments. Okay? He's going to hold this for, at home, hold it for about 30 seconds. And then he's going to go ahead and bend the elbow. Alright? It changes the angle of the stretch. Alright? Again, hold that for about 30 seconds. And then from here, he's going to turn the wrist over. Now stretching the top part of the arm. Again, you want to look at, you know, if you need to pause the TV, hold this stretch for 30 seconds. And then he's going to bend the arm again, changing the angle. Hold it for about 30 seconds. And then he's going to change hands. He's going to repeat on the other side. Now, one of the things to kind of focus on while you're doing this is feeling where is your shoulder? Is it up by your ear or is it relaxed? Because that's going to start to tell you how when your thoughts are controlling you, when your emotions are controlling you versus the other way around, this is a trigger because a lot of people carry their stress and their tension in their shoulders. So if you're stretching and you find your shoulders rising up to your ears, then that means when you're stressed, when you're nervous, when you're anxious, when you're worried, you're going to do the same thing. But when you're relaxed, your shoulder drops down. Alright, so start using this time to practice being relaxed while doing your exercises. Breathing deep and relaxed. Alright, check it out. Now we're going to do the double-handed cane rotation. It's going to help stretch the back. You see that Bob has a cane grab at either end, at the extreme end, 
And now he's going to turn, like turning a giant wheel, trying to bring his elbows together. While he's doing this, he is breathing deep and relaxed. Now, Bob, please turn. Now, what I want you to, to pay attention to is when you're doing this stretch, it's, you're going to find it hard to breathe because you're caving your chest in on itself. But if you start focusing, practicing breathing into the back, expanding the back with each breath, you're going to find that breathing in this exercise is very easy. Now, here's the thing, though. If we train ourselves to breathe into our back while we're still standing normal and walking normal, and we breathe into our chest, which is what most people do anyways, you're now going to find that you have more breath. You're going to find that your endurance improves. And as your breath relaxes, you're going to find that you relax more. All right. Now in the end, Bob is also breathing into the belly. He's making it so that he gets full breath in the back, in the chest, and in the belly. All right? So as you do this exercise, focus on that breath. Continuing to warm up the wrists, we're now going to do the single hand cane rotation. So we're going to grab our cane in a mid-shaft grip, and we're going to start rotating the cane. So we're going to go palm up, palm down. We're supporting on the forearm. We're not going past palm up, palm down. We're only going to do it 10 reps. After the 10th rep, you move your hand back behind your elbow. You're now going a little bit further. You're starting to allow these three fingers to relax so you can go further without risking the connective tissue. All right, the ligaments and the tendons in your wrist. After you reach 10, your hand goes back to the shoulder. Now you're going as full range of motion as you can. You're allowing the elbow to move and the wrist to really open. All right? And so, as you can see, he's hit his 10. So now he's going to change hands. Starting again, first with palm up, palm down. All right? Once he hits his next set of 10, he's going to go back behind the elbow. All right? Do not try and do this fast. It is better to do this slow than fast. We are dealing with the ligaments and the tendons in the wrist, and we don't want to run the risk of inflaming them or causing any issues, all right? Now, he's back to the shoulder. Now, part of the reason why we put the hand to the chest is to start reminding us that our empty hand is going to be up and alive if we ever have to defend ourselves, all right? Single-handed cane rotations are a very important part of your cane workout. Never, never cut them out. Now we're going to move to warming up the core. So we're going to have Bob here do the twist. So he's going to grab the cane in both hands, and he's going to start rotating his hips and shoulders. Now I want you to take a moment and take a look at his feet. All right? So I'm going to have him do it wrong first. Thanks, Bob. All right? I'm going to have him do it wrong first so you can see with his heels planted on the ground, He's twisting his spinal column. This is bad. All right? This is going to injure connective tissue, cause vertebrae to get out of the loin. Now, if he lifts the heel and rotates through, you see the spine is, the hips are moving with it, so the spine's not twisting. The muscles are getting warmed up, but the body, the back, is staying safe. Even if he tries to overreach to hit me. He still keeps his spine safe. Right. This is an important exercise in warming up the back before you do any workout routine. <laughs> you can tell he's trying very hard to hit me, but that's okay. So I'm not going to let him. And that's the spinal twist. Now we're going to move on to stretching the calves. Bob's going to turn towards me. He's going to form the tripod again. So cane and leg in the front. The lead leg is going to be in the back. Now this time, the heel is on the ground. The leg is as straight as he can make it. This is not necessarily as wide of a stance as you might think. What we're doing here is we're working to isolate the calf muscle. This is important for balance, 
but also for not pulling the muscle if you're trying to reach for something, if you have to move fast, if you misstep, all right? Again, his breathing is nice and relaxed. That's going to be one of the things that you hear all the time from me is to relax your breath. Now, also, I'm going to add something else. Start imagining yourself to breathe into the back. Feel your back become part of the breath. So that now, you're not just breathing with your chest, but you're breathing with the back. Now, I'm just going to change sides. So he comes up, change the hands with the cane, and steps back. Okay, focusing on his breathing, isolating. Now, if you start to find that this stretch is becoming a little too easy, what you can do is take a deeper step. All right, but you still want to try and make sure that the heel is on the ground. Okay, now I also want to note that you'll notice that in this episode, Bob is wearing shoes. Okay. I've mentioned this in previous episodes, but I want to reinforce that you don't have to work out barefoot. Previous episodes, Bob chose to because that is what was comfortable for him. But now, we've moved to showing you that you can do this in shoes. Because in real life, if something happens on the street, you're wearing shoes. Bob's going to come on up, shake it out. So this balancing exercise, I'm going to admit, is a challenging one. We're going to do the side kick with the round kick. You're going to balance with the cane and your supporting leg. Bring your leg up, kick out, come across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine and ten. Now switch sides. Now, as we're switching hands, remember the supporting leg, pivot it out a little bit, bring the knee up, bring it out, bring it back, kick. That's one. Up, out, kick. Two, three. Four, you need to take a break, go ahead. Five, this is challenging. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. The practical application for this could be if you're having to stop somebody, then kick them in the leg, and come across with the cane strap. All right? But, as you can see, this workout will make you sweat. So now we're going to practice some empty-handed techniques. We learn these techniques because, well, the idea is what if you lose your cane, you drop your cane, you still need to be able to defend yourself. So, as you can see, we put our canes away for right now. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do is step your right foot back. I'm assuming most of you are right-handed. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the four corners blocking that we did last week. So the protection of the head, low torso, outside, and across. Okay? And we're going to add punches. Now, initially, we're going to go Steve Austin slow. And then I'm going to have Bob run through it while I point some things out. And then we're going to wrap it up with my showing it to you at the speed you want to try and build up to. All right? So first, we're going to take our hand. Make a fist, put it at the ribs. The other hand is ready. We're going to bring it up. As the hand passes the fist, the fist shoots out. Boom. And we're just going to do a straight punch. We're not going to, we're not going to do the rotation. Just boom. Okay? And then they both come back. As the hand passes in front of the fist, the fist shoots out as the block executes. Okay? Repeat it. Pull them back. Come across. Block, shoot the punch out. Now this last part's tricky. The punching hand has to accelerate faster than the blocking hand, because it's got to come back and shoot out as it comes across. Boom. All right? So one more time. Come up, punch. Back, punch. Back, punch. Back, punch. All right? 
So now I'm going to have Bob show while I do some talking. Now, Bob, go ahead and stand here. All right, go ahead and start. All right, now, one thing to note is you don't want to go too far past because if your timing's off just, or distance is off a little bit, you're going to get hit. So make sure it's about a fist, at least a fist, in front of your forehead. All right, continue. All right. Now, the other thing to note, the other thing to note here is as you're doing the block, once it clears the fist, that's when to launch. So it lands at the same time as the block. Okay? And then on this one, you're not trying to touch your arms. You're trying, you're, imagine you're punching the person at the same time as you're blocking. So you're crossing your face as you're punching them. Okay? You can punch high or low. Now, I'm going to demonstrate for you what should be at speed. All right, so ready and okay, that's the speed that you want to try and build up to. Now, ultimately, people can go faster, but for right now, that's a great target to start for. So now we're going to combine some moves to create a combination that you can use to keep yourself safe on the street. The first one is going to be with a fan block, and I'm stepping to clear myself palm hill strike to the face. So I'm, I'm just shoving my hand into their face and then I'm going to hit them in the leg. Our idea here is to not necessarily kill the person. We just want to get away. If we take out the leg, we can get away. So fan block, palm hill, leg strike. Now I want to point out the palm hill, I'm not trying to knock them out with this. This isn't a, a, a knockout blow. It's a distraction. My real hit is to the leg. So fan block, palm hill, leg strike. Now I'm going to have Bob demonstrate on Bob. Go. So now Bob's going to do a fan block, palm hill strike, leg strike. Again, fan block, palm hill strike, leg strike. This is what it would look like if you're doing it on a person, except I'm having Bob hit a little higher than you would on a real life person because this Bob has no legs. Now I'm going to show you some practical applications of a person attacking you and how it would look. So now I'm going to show you two applications. The first one is that the person's punching you with their left hand. Fan block, palm hill strike, leg strike. Okay? Get hit in the leg, they're not going to chase you. The other application is that they punch with their right hand. Fan block, palm hill strike. As you can see, I'm really already turning him. And then leg strike. All right? You can hit them on the thigh, in the calf, on the shin. Doesn't matter, getting hit with the stick really hard in the leg is going to slow them down. All right, so those are two applications for the same technique. All right, practice this. Go beyond just watching the show, practice these techniques when you have free time. DVR the show so you can watch it over again to make sure you're doing the techniques correctly. Now, this next technique is going to use the reverse fan block, but we're still going to use a leg strike, but the number two leg strike now and the palm hill smash, okay? So we're going to go reverse fan block, blocking the punch coming at us, shoving our hand into their face, and as you can see, as I'm shoving the hand, my cane is relaxing into position to strike the leg. So boom. So I'm going fan block, palm hill, smash. Fan block, palm hill, smash. Okay, so now I'm going to show you this on the bob. So now on the bob, it's going to be fan block, palm hill, strike. Fan block, palm hill, strike. Okay, so you can see this is coming, and in reality, there's not a huge pause. He sees this, and this is what he's going to deal with. Okay, so one more time on the bob, is boom, boom. Okay. You can even go for having these hit simultaneously. Think of it as the flower hidden beneath the leaf. Now I'm going to show you an application that you can use this for. So the first attack is going to be a punch with the left hand. He's going to come in, I'm going to fan block, palm hill, leg smash. It's right up against the thigh or the shin, but more, at least with this kind of a height difference, it is going to be the thigh. If I were the same height, it would be against the shin. That's worse than the thigh, trust me. Now, the other is if he punches with the right hand. It's reverse fan block, 
Now, yes, I'm open, but the reality is even if he gets that off, this is coming at his face. He's going to worry more about that and never see this. Okay? So again, with the right hand, it comes up, boom, boom, boom. And if I follow through, I'm ready for another attack. Today's episode focused on health. Now, that's such a charged word, but let me explain. You see, yes, our health may not be exactly as we want it. We may have something, a chronic complaint about pain or illness or whatever. However, you have to understand something. If our health truly fails us, well, then we're dead. We die. And we're not always in pain every single moment of the day. We're not always sick every single moment of the day. And so what we can do is honor those things, be thankful for those things about our health that are good. And focus on the good rather than focusing on what is not working. So your heart's still working, so be thankful for that. Your lungs are still working, be thankful for that. Your brain, your eyes, your ears, your nose, anything. Maybe you have pain in your knee, but you don't have pain in your elbow. Be thankful for that. So choose, choose something to be thankful for about your health. Now, the thing is, is you don't have to write down that. Just write down a piece of paper. My health is what's keeping me alive. Put that paper on you someplace where you can pull it out and read it four times today. And over this next month, every day, read that four times. And say that to yourself. I am thankful for my health. Now, in today's episode, you did a lot of moving around. You did blocks. You did combinations of techniques. You did your warm-ups. So that shows that you do have health to be thankful for. Because you're able to follow along and work out with the program. And grow and learn with the techniques. So, be thankful for your health, and you may find that your health actually increases. And you'll have more, find more, to be thankful for. Have a great day. Like us on Facebook. I can do! Facebook, our Bob gets it.